Ever since 2009, Mario Kart Wii has experienced a massive modding scene with literally hundreds of custom tracks. It's so massive in fact that last month it became official that every single track from the mainline Mario Kart franchise has been remade in Mario Kart Wii. So in this video I'm gonna be ranking every single track from the Mario Kart franchise but in Mario Kart Wii. So how is this going to work? Well, for each track I'm gonna be picking what I consider to be the best version of the track and then I'm gonna be comparing all these best versions to each other through this ranking. Just like in the CDGP 2021 tracks ranking, I'm gonna be giving each track a score from 0 to 10, 0 being terrible, 10 being perfect, 5 being neutral, so that you can see how much I actually like the track. However, even if I sound very harsh criticizing these tracks, keep in mind that most of them were created by very few incredibly dedicated people. So even if I might seem harsh, I am very thankful for these legends and their awesome work. I also want to give a massive thank you to everyone who created CTGP and Retro Rewind since I recorded most of the tracks through those two mod packs. One last thing before starting with the list, all tracks from Mario Mario Kart Wii will also be included in this video. And yeah, with all that being said, let's get into the ranking. At number 145, we have GCN Baby Power created by Brad De La Boy. I hate this track. It's by far my least favorite track in the entire Mario Kart franchise. This track is a mix of boring and extreme. Boring because of the track itself and extreme because of the items. And it just doesn't work well at all in my opinion. Each race just feels like some sort of battle mode on a generic battle stage with a random winner at the end. However, this is definitely not the creator's fault. Brad De La Boy remade this track very nicely with amazing visuals. But I just hate the track's concept so much there's no way that it could ever place anywhere but last. At number 144 we have GBA Shy Guy Beach created by Nintendo. Yep, we already have a track from Mario Mario Kart Wii. And honestly it's insane to me how it could even end up there. Like seriously, did Nintendo not realize how bad this track actually is? The amount of bombs, traps and water that slows you down is insanely annoying. Not even the visuals are good, like what the heck Nintendo? The only reason why this place is above Baby Park is because it at least feels somewhat like a racetrack, but definitely not a good one, that's for sure. At number 143 we have GBA Bowser Castle 1 created by Cuts for Life. This is a pretty good remake but I just don't like the original track too much. It's very basic with pretty much no shortcuts and I also don't like the excessive amount of slow ramps at the end. Cuts for Life definitely remade this track very nicely with amazing visuals but there is some minor lag problems. However I hope that as soon as these lag problems get fixed this track gets added to CTGP. At number 142 we have SNES Koopa Beach 1 created by Luca. This is definitely a very creative take on SNES Koopa Beach 1, however this remake has one major issue, and that is all of the water being off-road. And at some sections it's literally impossible to avoid the water. Even if the water was normal road, this would probably still place very low since SNES Koopa Beach 1 is one of the most boring tracks in all of Mario Kart, even considering Luca's many ideas that he brought into this remake. At number 141 we have SNES Koopa Beach 2 created by Luca. And here we have the sequel to SNES Koopa Beach 1. The main reason why this place is above Koopa Beach 1 is because it doesn't have the off-road issues. But that doesn't prevent it from being one of the most basic and boring tracks in all of Mario Kart. This remake is pretty good though. At number 140 we have SNES Choco Island 2 created by Zilly. This is overall a fine remake with alright visuals but I just don't like the track that much yet again. I think that there's too many ramps. I think that this track could be significantly improved by either removing some ramps or by lowering all the ramps so that they give you virtually no air. At number 139 we have GCN Peach Beach created by Nintendo. At this point I feel like Nintendo just sucks at making beach tracks. This is already the 4th beach track in this ranking and we're not even done with the bottom 10. I just find this track to not be very interesting and I also don't like the Cataquax. Thankfully it seems like after Mario Kart Wii Nintendo has realized how much their beach tracks suck because in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8 they are absolutely amazing. At number 138 we have SNES Vanilla Lake 1 created by Squire Turnbolt. This is a pretty good remake, but it's SNES Vanilla Lake 1. While it works better in Mario Kart Wii compared to Super Mario Kart and there is no annoying ice physics, it's just still not a track that I really enjoy that much. At number 137 we have N64 Moomoo Farm created by ZPL. Great remake that looks nice visually and drives well enough, but it's N64 Moomoo Farm. The track just feels like a much worse version of Moomoo Meadows. And while this remake is certainly much better than the version that used to be in CTGP for a long time, there is still definitely room for improvement. For example the road could be flattened to make the track less awkward to drive. Even then though it's Moomoo Farm, not the most interesting track so it would still place pretty low regardless. At 
At number 136 we have DS Figure 8 Circuit created by Quadric99 and Sneaky. This is a pretty good remake, but it's Figure 8 Circuit. You're just driving around in an 8, that's it. The additional Goombas and the ramp at the end provide at least some sort of interest, but this track still isn't even near as interesting as most tracks in the Mario Kart franchise. At number 135 we have GBA Peach Circuit created by ZPL. Yet again it's a good remake but I just don't like Peach Circuit too much. It's another very basic track, there's just not much going on, so yeah, even with ZPL's great remake it still places very low. At number 134 we have SNES Vanilla Lake 2 created by Jaden MKW. Good remake, I like the visual style Jaden went with, but it's SNES Vanilla Lake 2. It is the first track though that I'm giving a positive score. It drives pretty well and is much more interesting than all the tracks below it. The only thing that bothers me is the road being slippery road. Even if it's realistic, I hate slippery roads. So to every CT creator, please use normal road. It might not be as realistic, but it drives much better. Anyways, this remake is still pretty good though and I would like to see a vanilla lake track getting added to CGP. At number 133 we have SNES Mario Circuit 1 created by ZPL and Jasper. It's a shame that this got removed from CTGP because I find it to be much better than the current version. It looks amazing visually and drives very well. Though it's still SNES Mario Circuit 1 so it still plays pretty low because it's just still not an interesting track. At number 132 we have Wii U Excite Bike Arena created by Siki. This is by far the most overrated track in all of Mario Kart. I don't get why people like this track. It's just two straightaways with a bunch of ramps and two turns with a bunch of mud. That's literally it. Anyways, this remake is pretty good, there's basically no flaws here, but it's just another case of me not liking the original track that much. At number 131 we have N64 Sherbet Land created by Nintendo. While I wouldn't say that this track is exactly terrible, it's also not really that good. Combining sharp turns with ice physics is never a good idea. And neither is putting giant penguins right behind blind turns. This track is also the sole reason why Type 2 Slippery Road exists, so thanks for that I guess. At number 130 we have DS Yoshi Falls created by Nintendo. While this track is actually pretty fun to drive, it's also incredibly short and simple. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's also not necessarily a good thing. So yeah, while this track is pretty good, I don't see any reason to place it above the following tracks. At number 129 we have SNES Mario Circuit 4 created by ZPL. Good remake with amazing visuals, but SNES Mario Circuit 4 has never really interested me that much. The track design basically just feels like SNES Mario Circuit 3, but a bit longer and a bit more awkward to drive. Good remake as I said, but right now I just don't see any reason why this track should ever get added to CTGP. At number 128 we have SNES Ghost Valley 2 created by Nintendo. This is much better than the version in Super Mario Kart and it's actually quite fun to drive, but it's way too short. This makes it pretty much impossible to catch up if you do only a single major mistake. I do fairly enjoy the track design itself though. At number 127 we have N64 DK Jungle Parkway created by Nintendo. It's an alright track, but it has some issues. My main problem with the track is almost the entire track being slippery road, the ending shortcut doesn't work very well and in my opinion the track is a bit too long. It's still a good track though and it actually can give some great races. At number 126 we have Wii Moo Moo Meadows created by Nintendo. It's another one of these alright tracks but it's just very forgettable. While I like the part with the cows, I'm not the biggest fan of the ending section. I find it to be a bit awkward to drive. This track definitely gives some of the least exciting races in normal Mario Kart Wii. At number 125 we have Wii Luigi Circuit created by Nintendo. While this is another very simple track, the main reason why this place is above Moo Moo Meadows is because it actually has some strategy. I'm mainly talking about the shortcut at the end of the track, which in my opinion is one of the better off-road shortcuts in the game. Though it is still Luigi's circuit and it's definitely not the most interesting track still. At number 124 we have N64 Toad's Turnpike created by Nintendo Yoshi. You're quickly gonna find out that I don't really like car tracks. And Toad's Turnpike in my opinion has the worst track design out of all the car tracks. There's too many turns and no shortcuts. This remake by Nintendo Yoshi is pretty good though and looks amazing visually. At number 123 we have GCM Mushroom City created by Redefy and Tok. Good remake but it's another car track. The only thing that puts this track above towards Turnpike is the split pathways and a few shortcuts. This makes the track feel slightly more interesting than towards Turnpike. At number 122 we have GBA Bowser Castle 2 created by Chaos Shadow 23. It's an alright remake but there's way too many slow ramps. Even with other slow ramps it probably wouldn't be the most interesting track. At number 121 we have GCN Sherbet Lands created by Tok. Good remake overall but I just don't like the ice physics. They can get especially annoying at the part with all the icicles. I'm also just waiting for a Mario Kart 8 version of this track to be made.
At number 120 we have Wii U Mute City created by the Gaming Bram. Before starting to talk about the track, I just want to give a massive respect to the Gaming Bram because he went out of his way to remake every remaining Mario Kart 8 track in a very short amount of time, so definitely massive respect for your efforts. Now to the actual track. While this remake proves that a great remake of Mute City is entirely possible, this is not quite there yet. The track is extremely slanted at some sections which makes it pretty much impossible to do consistent wheelies. I'm also not a big fan of how the walls are cacti. The Gaming Bram has been updating some of his tracks recently though, so this track might become much better in the future. At number 119 we have DS Shroom Ridge created by ZPL. It's another card track but at least it has a more interesting track design and some shortcuts. This remake is great as well though I also considered going with Sneaky's version as I actually prefer the visuals there. But at the end I decided to go with ZPL's version as it drives a little smoother. At number 118 we have N64 Luigi Raceway created by Zilly. Good remake with clean visuals, I like how you can go onto the boardwalk at any point but the track design just isn't the most interesting so the track still plays relatively low. At number 117 we have SNES Ghost Valley 3 created by Nintendo Yoshi. Good remake makes the track feel much more interesting, Ghost Valley 3 is also by far the best Ghost Valley track, though some ramps can seem a bit misleading because they sometimes face straight even though the track goes to the right, but other than that this is pretty well remade. At number 116 we have SNES Bowser Castle 1 created by Brad de la Boy. This remake has an overall great concept and makes the track feel much more interesting, though it's not quite perfect yet. There's way too many Kata quacks, some ramps can kill you if you trick of them and I bonked into an invisible wall. It's definitely a great concept though and I think with some bug fixes this could get into CGGP. At number 115 we have GBA Riverside Park created by Dark Wolf 658 While I actually prefer the gameplay of Chaos Shadows version, this one removes the two broken shortcuts which is always a big plus. It also adds some elevation which makes the track feel slightly more interesting, but it's still nowhere near as good as Lakeside Park. At number 114 we have GCN Wario Colosseum created by Tok. This is overall a good remake that drives pretty well and looks nice visually, but it's another one of these cases where I just don't find the original track to be that great. There's basically no shortcuts and the track design and visuals don't really change up throughout the race. I personally think that Wario's Crumbled Colosseum, which is a custom track made by Justin, does a much better job at making the track feel more interesting by changing up the track design and visuals throughout the race. It's still a good track though. At number 113 we have GCN Rainbow Road created by Redefy and Talk. While this is a good port with nice visuals, there is one main problem. And that is a lap count. 3 laps is way too long, I just don't wanna play a track for 4 minutes straight. Now long tracks sometimes can work, for example in my opinion Glimmer Express Trains is the best custom track of all time, I know this opinion is unpopular, but whatever. Despite being a very long track, I absolutely love Glimmer Express Trains because it changes up the track design at pretty much every single section and adds a ton of strats and shortcuts. But that certainly can't be said about GCN Rainbow Road, so the track would be much better off being two laps, which will make it less boring. At number 112 we have GCN Yoshi Circuit created by ZPL. Great remake, drives well enough and looks amazing visually, but just like many tracks down here, Yoshi Circuit isn't really my favorite track. It's very similar to Wario Colosseum where I feel like the track has too many turns and the track design doesn't really change up too much. Though the track does have some shortcuts which is the main reason why it places above Wario Colosseum. At number 111 we have SNES Donut Plains 1 created by ZPL. Great remake with very nice visuals, but SNES Donut Plains 1 is just another one of those tracks that are just not too interesting. I do like the Koopas though, which is the main reason why I picked this remake for the ranking instead of Lucas. At number 110 we have SNES Mario Circuit 3 created by Nintendo. For how simple the track is, it's actually surprisingly good. It's pretty fun to drive and there are actually some shortcuts. Though it is still a very simplistic and short track, so it doesn't manage to place any higher than that. At number 109 we have Wii Moonview Highway created by Nintendo. It's another car track but this time around the track design is much better. Instead of trying to make the track interesting by adding a bunch of turns, this one instead goes for interesting straightaways which works much better for car tracks. It makes the cars much less unpredictable. It's still a car track though. At number 108 we have SNES Rainbow Road created by ZPL and Bear. This is hands down one of the best looking tracks of all time. I don't think it's too crazy to say that this track rivals Mario Kart 8's visuals. It also drives very well, this is definitely the perfect SNES Rainbow Road remake. At number 107 we have SNES Mario Circuit 2 created by ZPL. Specifically I'm talking about the 1.0 version of the track, as I find this version's visuals to be much better than the ones in the 2.0 version. Other than that, these two versions are relatively similar. Now to the actual 
actual track. While SNES Mario Circuit 2 definitely is the best SNES Mario Circuit, it's still not the most interesting track out there. At number 106, we have N64 Calamari Desert created by Sneaky. This is a great remake as per usual with Sneaky, I like the visuals and I also like how it plays. Nevertheless, Calamari Desert just isn't the most interesting track, it pretty much just consists of long turns and the train doesn't really affect many races either. This track does have many shortcuts though, which puts it above most other simple tracks. At number 105, we have SNES Choco Island 1 created by Luca. This is unironically one of the most fun tracks of all time. Like seriously, these ramps are so goddamn satisfying. This is why I said earlier that the ramps on Choco Island 2 should be changed in a way that they give you virtually no air, because this remake of Choco Island 1 proves that it works incredibly well. But when I'm praising this track so much, why does it play so low then? Well, that's mostly because of how short this track is. I think that this is one of the few instances where 5 laps would actually benefit the track. Nevertheless, this track's just super fun to play. At number 104, we have DS Mario Circuit created by ZPL. Absolute banger remake. Looks amazing visually and drives very well. There is no flaws here, DS Mario Circuit just isn't the most interesting track out there. At number 103, we have Wii Daisy Circuit created by Nintendo. While I do think that people are underrating this track, Daisy Circuit definitely also isn't the most exciting track in normal Mario Kart Wii. Though the track at least has some unique elements, like the sidewalks or the pylons, but it's still not as exciting as most Wii tracks. I do like the visuals though. At number 102, we have Wii Mario Circuit created by Nintendo. I have very similar feelings towards this track as to Daisy Circuit, but it has more shortcuts, which is the main reason why it places above Daisy Circuit. Other than that, these tracks are relatively similar. At number 101, we have GBA Luigi Circuit created by ZPL. Awesome remake that plays very well and has great visuals as per usual with ZPL, but yet again, this track is just not too exciting. At number 100, we have GBA Bowser Castle 3 created by Nintendo. While this might be one of the most competitive tracks in Mario Kart Wii, I just don't find it to be that fun to play, at least compared to many other tracks in normal Mario Kart Wii. I don't really like the track's nature of having mostly 90 degree turns and basically no elevation. Of course, it's still a good track, otherwise it would have placed much lower, but I just don't find it to be as interesting as most other tracks in the game. At number 99, we have GCN Mario Circuit created by Nintendo. It's a fine track, just very forgettable. It's a Mario Circuit after all. It does have more interesting objects and shortcuts than most other Mario Circuits though, so that's why it places above them. At number 98, we have Wii U Dragon Driftway created by the gaming brand. Good remake, but it has similar problems to Mute City, where parts of the track are just way too slanted. However, most of these parts are turns instead of straightaways, so you won't have to do too many awkward wheelies. And because I can't think of a good sentence to finish off this track, let's just move on to the next one. At number 97, we have DS Desert Hills created by Nintendo. I actually fairly like this track. It has an alright track design and many shortcuts, though there are some issues. First off, Slippery Road. It can get especially annoying at the end with all the turns. Also, there might actually be too many off-road shortcuts on this track, especially towards the end of the track. Otherwise, though, I think that this track is quite decent. At number 96, we have 3DS Daisy Hills created by Atlas. We have finally arrived at our first Mario Kart 7 track. Daisy Hills is quite simplistic, there's not really too much going on, and this remake by Atlas doesn't really change much about it. It also feels a little small at some sections, but that might just be me. At number 95, we have SNES Donut Plains 3 created by Bear and ZPL. Great remake, the visuals are absolutely stunning and it drives very well. Once again though, it's just not the most interesting track out there. At number 94, we have SNES Donald Plains 2 created by Luca. You can basically just copy everything that I said about SNES Donald Plains 3. At number 93, we have N64 Frappe Snowland created by Nintendo Yoshi. Great remake, looks and plays basically just like the Mario Kart 2 version. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is the turn before the snowman section being pretty bumpy. But it's just one turn, this track mainly places here because it's just not that interesting. At number 92, we have GBA Bowser Castle 4 created by Chaos Shadow 23. Good remake of one of my favorite tracks in Mario Kart Super Circuit, but I think that the track is a bit too long in Mario Kart Wii. Two laps will probably fit this track a little better. I do like the track design though, it's very interesting at variants, so I think that this track has a lot of potential in Mario Kart Wii. At number 91, we have Wii U Cloud Top Cruise created by Diego Vapi. I've never heard of this creator before, but this remake is pretty solid, though it's not quite perfect yet. The mushroom hitboxes are whack, and the first turn after the cannon is a bit too tight. Otherwise, though, this is mostly good. At number 90, we have 3DS Woohoo Loop created by Funky Dude 15, Redefy, and Zagraf. Good remake, but Woohoo Loop definitely is one of the more basic one lap tracks. Other than the shortcuts and split pathways, which don't always work very well, there's just not much interesting stuff going on. 
At number 89 we have Wii U Sweet Sweet Canyon created by the gaming Bram. This is an overall solid remake and it plays well enough, though it's not 100% perfect yet. My main issue with the track is that the split pathway is too slanted. Also Sweet Sweet Canyon just isn't my favorite Mario Kart 8 track. At number 88 we have N64 Koopa Trooper Beach created by Zilli. The visuals are this remake's strong suit. I especially love the water effect. This track also plays very well, although I do find it to be very weird that the darker sand is type 2 slippery road. But that aside, this is about as good as Koopa Trooper Beach can get. At number 87 we have Wii U Mario Circuit created by the Gaming Bram. This is definitely one of the Gaming Bram's more optimized remakes both visually and gameplay wise. But it's Wii U Mario Circuit, far from my favorite Mario Kart 8 track. It's one of the better Mario Circuits though. At number 86 we have Wii U Bowser's Castle created by the Gaming Bram. This remake is overall solid, though it has some issues. My main issue with the track is definitely the Bowser section. The road there is very bumpy which can lead to many misalignments. And Bowser's fireballs can be very unpredictable as the hitbox of the fireball appears before the actual visible fireball appears. Also the fireballs at the section before that can get very annoying. I still like this remake though. At number 85 we have SNES Ghost Valley 1 created by Slime Server. I know I said earlier that SNES Ghost Valley 3 was the best Ghost Valley track, but this remake puts SNES Ghost Valley 1 far ahead of its successors. It completely changes up the theme and visual style of the track and adds some off-road and ramps. This needs to get added to CTGP. At number 84 we have Wii U Hyrule Circuit created by the Gaming Bram. It's a good remake, my only problem here is that the stairs are actually stairs. And while that may sound logical, it's just not too fun to drive. Just make them one flat, normal road. It's much better, trust me. Otherwise though, this remake is pretty good. At number 83 we have N64 Banshee Boardwalk created by ZPL. This is the perfect N64 Banshee Boardwalk remake and an absolute no-brainer to put into CTGP. It looks stunning visually and the additional ramps make this track a little more interesting, although it is still N64 Banshee Boardwalk which is far from the most interesting track. At number 82 we have GBA Yoshi Desert created by ZPL. This is another great remake by ZPL. The visuals are amazing and it drives very well. I hope that one day we'll see Yoshi Desert in CTGP again. At number 81 we have 3DS Toad Circuit created by Torin. Normally a track like this would have placed much lower but sometimes shortcuts are everything. I'm obviously referring to the most likely unintended shortcut that skips the tunnel section. By this point that shortcut feels so natural to me that I even instinctly tried to go for it when the track got ported to Mario Kart 8 through the booster course pass. Honestly Nintendo should have just officially added that shortcut. At number 80 we have GBA Cheap Cheap Island created by ZPL. Good remake, plays just like the version in CTGP but adds some way nicer visuals. I've also noticed the release of a new version of Cheap Cheap Island by Square Turnbolt, which looks even better visually but in the end I decided to go with ZPL's version as I slightly prefer the gameplay there. At number 79 we have Wii U Mario Kart Stadium created by the Gaming Bram. Great remake, the visuals are clean and it drives mostly well. There's not really much to complain here, it's just Mario Kart Stadium, which is definitely not the most interesting track, although it is one of the better first tracks. At number 78 we have DS Peach Gardens created by Nintendo. It's a fine track but definitely one of the more average tracks in Mario Kart Wii. It does have some unique parts though, especially the hatch maze section. But there's basically no ramps or boost panels which makes the racing experience a bit slow, at least compared to other regular tracks. At number 77 we have 3DS Neo Bowser City created by Atlas. This is actually one of my least favorite tracks in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8 but it plays a lot better in Mario Kart Wii due to the inside drifting bikes. Although it's still not the most exciting track out there because it basically just consists of turns. Now to the actual remake, it's pretty good and it looks amazing visually. I also considered going with CPL's version but I slightly prefer the track without the Goombas. At number 76 we have GBA Mario Circuit created by Mystery99. Despite this track's simplicity it's actually surprisingly fun to drive. There's just enough boost panels and ramps to make this track actually feel quite fast paced. Plus it has a lot of off-road shortcuts. Though as I already said this track is still quite simplistic so it doesn't matter to place any higher than that. At number 75 we have Wii U Big Blue created by the Gaming Bram. Aside from the first turn and the very end this track actually feels quite natural in Mario Kart Wii and it's definitely much more optimized than Mute City. I would say that some parts still need to be flattened but this track has a ton of potential. At number 74 we have GBA Sky Garden created by Luca. Say what you want about the Mario Kart 8 version of Sky Garden, I personally very much prefer it over the GBA version. I find it to be much more dynamic and interesting. This remake is good as well and is quite fun to play, though I still wouldn't say that Sky Garden is exactly my favorite track. 
At number 73, we have 3DS Cheap Cheap Lagoon created by Tok. Great remake, the visuals are amazing and it's very fun to play. The shell thingies are also actually moving, which is the main reason why I picked this version over ZPL's version. This is another obvious one to add to CTTP. At number 72, we have N64 Wario Stadium created by Zilli. This remake is overall good, it looks fine enough visually and dries well. It's also definitely one of the more interesting Mario Kart 64 tracks. Though two laps will probably work a bit better on this track. At number 71, we have GBA Snowland created by CP Fusion. It's insane how much this remake improves the original track. Snowland is one of the most boring tracks in Mario Kart Super Circuit, but the additional boost panels and shortcuts make this track much more interesting. The visuals are amazing as well. At number 70, we have 3DS Rosalina's Ice World created by Mystery99 and Skipper93653. While this track may be jank, I find it to be pretty fun for Worldwides and this list is mostly based on Worldwides. I also considered going with Squire Turnbull's version, but I slightly prefer the more dark blue visual style of this version over Squire Turnbull's more orangey visual style. At number 69, we have SNES Bowser Castle 2 created by Toxic Amaranth. This remake is... nice. It looks amazing visually and it's a bit shorter than the CTGP version, which is the main reason why I picked this version for the ranking. The only problem is that the ramps at the end can kill you if you trick off them, but as long as you don't trick, you're good to go. At number 68, we have Wii U Mount Wario created by the gaming brand. While I wouldn't say that this remake is quite as optimized as most other Mario Kart remakes, it's Mount Frickin' Wario. One of the best tracks in the entire Mario Kart series for dang sure. And this remake isn't that bad either. The only part that I find awkward to drive is the first section because it combines sharp turns with ice physics. But if this track one day gets a 100% optimized version, it's gonna be one of the best tracks in Mario Kart Wii. At number 67, we have Wii U Twisted Mansion created by the Gaming Gram. This is a good remake, the track works well in Mario Kart Wii and the visuals are good enough. Keep in mind that by this point it becomes ridiculously hard to rank all these tracks because they're all amazing. So even though this position might sound kind of meh, this track is still really good. At number 66, we have 3DS Makawuhu created by FunkyDude15 and Wexos. Great remake, looks nice visually and dries mostly well. I just generally don't find 1-lap tracks to be as exciting as 3-lap tracks. At number 65, we have Wii U Bone Dry Dunes created by Diego VP. Good remake with nice visuals. It also dries mostly well, although the beginning section is a bit bumpy. Also, the right split pathway before the cannon is pretty awkward. Otherwise, though, I enjoy this track. At number 64, we have N64 Royal Raceway created by ZPL. Awesome remake, looks amazing visually and drives incredibly well. Royal Raceway isn't the most exciting track though, so that's why it places here. At number 63, we have Wii U Water Park created by the gaming brand. Great remake, the visuals are clean and it drives very well. Even the spiral turn is fun, so there's not much to complain here other than Water Park just not being the most interesting track. At number 62, we have Wii U Super Bell Subway created by the gaming brand. Great remake that drives pretty well. The only thing that slightly confuses me is that the train is a bit short. Also, the last ramp of the train section doesn't work very well, although it is an optional ramp, so it isn't really that much of a problem. At number 61, we have DSDK Pass created by ZPL. Great remake, as always with ZPL, it looks amazing visually and drives very well. And yes, that even applies for the turns in the beginning section. The downhill section is a tiny bit bumpy, but other than that, this remake is pretty much perfect. At number 60, we have Wii U Thromp Ruins created by the gaming brand. Great remake, drives very well in Mario Kart Wii, and the visuals are also good. Overall, there's no major flaws here. At number 59, we have GCN Luigi Circuit created by Tok. For being the first track in Mario Kart Double Dash, GCN Luigi Circuit actually manages to beat surprisingly many tracks from its game. I just really like how it plays. This remake is good as well. At number 58, we have DS TikTok Clock created by ZPL. While I think that TikTok Clock is quite overrated, this remake is absolutely amazing. It looks great visually and it finally features all the moving stuff. This is another no-brainer to put into CTGP. At number 57, we have N64 Mario Raceway created by Nintendo. For being a circuit, this track is actually way more unique than you might think. And that is because of its abundance of shortcuts. Those shortcuts lead to this track having a completely different playing strategy. And while it might be broken, I think it's funny having a track like this in normal Mario Kart Wii. At number 56, we have GBA Rainbow Road created by Chaos Shadow 23. This is an overall great remake, it's very fun to drive and it looks good visually. I also prefer this track without all the bumper ramps at the sides, which is mainly why I put this version over all the other versions. There's not much to complain here, it's just GBA Rainbow Road. A pretty good track, but not the most interesting one. At number 55, we have Wii U Shy Guy Falls created by the gaming brand. Shy Guy Falls is one of my favorite tracks in Mario Kart 8 and this remake is mostly alright. Some parts are a little bumpy, but overall I like the playing style of this track. 
At number 54, we have N64 Choco Mountain, created by Taco Josh. This remake improves the original track by a ton. Mario Kart 2's version is by far the best version of this track and Taco Josh remade it perfectly. It's very fun to drive and it looks just like in Mario Kart Tour. There's no room for improvement here. At number 53 we have 3DS Bowser's Castle created by Waxholes and Atlas. This is a pretty good remake with nice visuals. Some sections can be pretty bumpy though but it's not too much of a problem except for time trials. But otherwise this is pretty good. At number 52 we have Wii U Toad Harbor created by the Gaming Bram. I saw some critique on this track regarding the visuals and while I would say that this is one of the weaker tracks by the Gaming Bram on the visual department, I find it to be very fun to play for the most part. And I don't care if it's intentional or not, low tricking the ramps at the end is the most satisfying thing ever. At number 51 we have 3DS Mario Circuit created by ZPL and Bree. This is pretty much the perfect remake. The visuals are clean and it drives very well. And yep, that even applies for the Spyro Turn. 3DS Mario Circuit is also by far my favorite Mario Circuit. At number 50 we have GCM Mushroom Bridge created by Tok. This is the only car track that I actually tolerate. And that is because A. The cars aren't a pain in the air, and B. The track is actually interesting with many cool shortcuts and strats. Tok remade this track very nicely as well with clean visuals. While I still wouldn't say that GCM Mushroom Bridge is exactly the best track out there, it's definitely better than all the other car tracks. At number 49 we have Wii U Wild Woods created by the Gaming Gram. Wild Woods is my favorite track in Mario Kart 8 and this remake is pretty solid. Every section of the track drives pretty well, though I'd recommend upscaling the track as it feels very small at most sections. Otherwise though I like this. At number 48 we have 3DS Shy Guy Bazaar created by Atlas. This is a pretty good remake, it drives pretty well and looks good visually. I just don't find Shy Guy Bazaar to be very interesting aside from its theme. At number 47 we have SNES Bowser Castle 3 created by Dot. This is an absolutely incredible remake of one of my favorite SNES tracks. It looks great visually and drives incredibly well. The ramps actually work properly and there's many cool race strats. It is still a SNES track and I think you know what that means by this point, so yeah let's just move on I guess. At number 46 we have GCN Bowser's Castle created by Tok. Great remake, the visuals are clean and it drives mostly well. I've seen some people criticizing the fire wheel at the end of the track and I personally don't actually find it to be that annoying but it got removed anyways with an update recently, so it doesn't really make any difference. The only things I don't like that much are the two super sharp turns and the stairs actually being stairs. Just make them normal road for god's sake. At number 45 we have N64 Rainbow Road created by CP Fusion. Awesome remake with amazing visuals. It is way more fun and dynamic than the version that's currently in CTGP. And to my own surprise, two laps actually work incredibly well on this track. I can't wait to see this remake in CTGP and while we're at it, please remove the hidden tracks. Just make this a normal track. The hidden tracks are quite unnecessary. At number 44 we have DS Luigi's Mansion created by Tok. Yet another great remake by Tok. It drives very well, the visuals are great and there is a ton of scenery around the track. I especially love the tree objects, they actually look really good. There is no flaws here, DS Luigi's Mansion just is another track that I just don't find to be that interesting track design wise. At number 43 we have Wii U Sunshine Airport created by Diego Vapi. This is an overall great remake and it drives pretty well for the most part. But why is it two laps? That decision makes absolutely no sense to me. Also the entrance of the cannon is a bit too wide and can Sadly screw you over if you go too far outside. It's still fun to drive though. At number 42 we have Wii Warriors Goldmine created by Nintendo. We are arriving at the truly amazing tracks now. Warriors Goldmine has a mostly fun and super variant track design. I especially like the second half of the lap with the minecart section and the split pathway. Though I still wouldn't say it's quite as fun to drive as the following tracks. At number 41 we have GCN DK Mountain created by Nintendo. This track has its fun elements and its not so fun elements. I love the shortcut, the boulders and whatever this is, but the rocky section can feel very bumpy and the bridge at the end is a pain in the ass. If you get hit once on that bridge it's impossible to recover, but otherwise I very much enjoy this track. At number 40 we have GCN Dry Dry Desert created by ZPL. This is an absolutely amazing remake. The visuals are beautiful and every single section works very well. I wish there was a way to implement the tornado for Mario Kart Double Dash but I highly doubt that's possible at Mario Kart Wii. But all limitations considered, this remake is perfect. At number 39 we have 3DS Warrior Shipyard created by Skipper93653. Great remake, the visuals are nice and it drives pretty well. The pipe actually works properly and the track includes basically all objects from the original version. I hope that one day we'll see Warrior Shipyard in CTGP again. 
At number 38, we have Wii U Ice Ice Outpost created by the Gaming Gram. I'm one of those 12 people that actually like this track. In fact, it's actually one of my favorite tracks in Mario Kart 8. I just find all the shrimp shortcuts to be very satisfying to pull off, especially in a game as restrictive as Mario Kart 8. I know this opinion is unpopular, but anyways, let's just get to the remake. It's pretty good and dries mostly well. The only part that I don't like too much is the 270 degree turn at the end of the track as it gets way too slanted. But it's a great remake otherwise. At number 37 we have GBA Boo Lake created by Slime Server. This is like SNES Ghost Valley 1 but a million times better. The track design is made super dynamic. Even the visuals change up a lot on a GBA track. This is yet another no brainer to add to CGDP. At number 36 we have Wii DK Summit created by Nintendo. I love this track for its unique playing style. There is no other track out there that plays even remotely like this one. I also find the entire track to be super fun to play although there are some minor issues. First off, thick off-road. Why? Also this track can get quite janky which I guess you can decide on whether that's a good or bad thing. But overall this track is quite amazing. At number 35 we have GCN Daisy Cruiser created by Funky Dude 15, Redefy and Courtney. Great remake of one of my favorite Mario Kart Double Dash tracks. The entire track drives very well, even the weird split pathway. From here on I'll have a hard time finding anything to criticize. At number 34 we have DS Cheap Cheap Beach created by Square Turnbolt. Square Turnbolt's track quality has been absolutely insane for the last couple months and this is certainly no exception. This remake is super fun to play and the visuals are stunning. I'm glad we have this remake in CTGP now. At number 33 we have Wii U Dolphin Shoals created by Mr. Fluffy. Mr. Fluffy was far ahead of his time when he made this track. Many months after its release it was still one of the only fully optimized Mario Kart 8 remakes in Mario Kart Wii. It's nearly flawless and looks great visually. Though I did say nearly flawless because the back of the whale can be a bit janky. But that's only a very small and optional portion of the track so it doesn't really make any difference. At number 32 we have GBA Cheeseland created by ZPL. This is by far the best version of Cheeseland ever. It's mostly based on the Mario Kart 8 version of the track but it also adds the mice from the Mario Kart Super Circuit version and it removes the annoying cheese holes. This is a very obvious choice to add to CTGP. At number 31 we have Wii Grumble Volcano created by Nintendo. This track is broken and I love it. This track is filled to the brim with shortcuts including Mario Kart Wii's most broken shortcut, the respawn cut. My only minor problem with this track is that it's pretty bumpy at some sections but otherwise it's very fun to drive. At number 30 we have DS Warrior Stadium created by ZPL. Another absolutely amazing remake by ZPL and yet again by far the best version of the track. I actually don't like this track that much in Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart 8 but in Mario Kart Wii it works much much better. It's very fun to drive and looks amazing visually. I do wish that the end was more like the Mario Kart 8 version though. At number 29 we have Wii U Rainbow Road created by Squadaloo. Incredible remake with amazing visuals. The entire remake is insanely optimized and fits Mario Kart Wii's controls perfectly. This just makes me wish that one day Nintendo abolishes their copyright BS so that this beautiful track can get added to CTGP. Though sadly that's very unrealistic since, you know, it's Nintendo. At number 28 we have GBA Sunset Wilds created by Flint. Another absolutely incredible remake. The visuals are absolutely stunning and it drives very well. Yet another obvious choice for CTGP. At number 27 we have GBA Broken Pier created by Xblue98. Xblue98 is arguably the most insane CT creator out there so it should be no surprise that this remake is also absolutely insane. It is by far the best looking custom track of all time and it's not close at all. The scenery around the track is also absolutely crazy. The entire track is insanely fun to drive and has many hidden pathways and shortcuts. The only reason why this track doesn't place any higher is because I still don't find GBA Broken Pier to have the most interesting track design. But if we put the original track design aside this is arguably be the best and definitely the most insane retro remake out there and I'm super excited to play it in CTGP. At number 26 we have 3DS Piranha Plant Slide created by Atlas. Mario Kart 7 has in my opinion the best Nitro tracks and this one's no exception. And this remake surely does its job. It's very fun to drive and looks good visually. The pipe before the water section is a bit awkward but otherwise I really like this. At number 25 we have GCN Dino Dino Jungle created by Tok. Dino Dino Jungle is my favorite track in Mario Kart Double Dash and this remake has it all. The moving dinosaur, the water geysers and all split pathways are all included. There's even a turn skip shortcut at the end of the track. I can't wait to see this in CTGP.
At number 24, we have N64 Yoshi Valley created by ZPL. Absolutely incredible remake. It looks amazing visually and the entire track drives very well. ZPL has implemented many cool and unique ideas into this track, such as making the normally fastest pathway an off-road shortcut and keeping the shroomless turn skip shortcut from the old version. All of this combined makes Yoshi Valley one of my favorite Mario Kart 64 tracks in Mario Kart Wii. At number 23 we have Diaz Delfino Square created by Nintendo. Even though this track might seem much more simple than most tracks up here, it's actually much more interesting than you might think. My favorite part about the track by far is the shortcuts. Especially the double shortcut is just very satisfying to pull off. This track gives some of the best races in Mario Kart Wii. At number 22 we have Wii Dry Dry Ruins created by Nintendo. If you thought Grumble Volcano had many shortcuts, this track basically is an entire shortcut. There's the Sand Hop, the Lake Shortcut, the Wall Glitch, the Shroomless Ending Shortcut, the Three Shroom Shortcut, which people wrongfully refer to as the Ultra Shortcut, and literally endless amounts of off-road shortcuts. Now this track does come with its issues. First off, about two-thirds of the track are slippery road, and also the pillars can screw you over very badly. Without these issues, this would probably be my favorite track of all time, but even with those issues, this track is still incredibly amazing. At number 21 we have GBA Ribbon Road created by Gabriella. This remake is insane, especially the new 2.0 version. It looks amazing visually, drives very well and is filled to the brim with creative ideas. I especially love the shortcut with the baby booster and how it opens up its roof lap 3 just like it does in normal Mario Kart Wii when you do a trick. That along with the rest of this remake is just ingenious. At number 20 we have DS Waluigi Pinball created by Sneaky. Awesome remake, it drives very well and looks great visually. It doesn't change much about the original version but it doesn't have to because it's Waluigi Pinball. And while this isn't my favorite track in Mario Kart DS, it's definitely up there. At number 19 we have Wii U Animal Crossing created by ZPL. When the best custom track creator decides to do a Mario Kart 8 remake, you know it's gonna be freaking incredible. The entire track drives insanely well and looks amazing visually. ZPL has even made all 4 seasons of the track, like that's incredible. At number 18 we have GCN Waluigi Stadium created by Nintendo. While Dino Dino Jungle might be my favorite track in Mario Kart Double Dash, Waluigi Stadium just drives insanely well in Mario Kart Wii. The halfpipes and the ability to trick make this track much more exciting than the original version. Overall this is just a really enjoyable track. At number 17 we have Wii Coconut Mall created by Nintendo. It's a meme track but it's actually good. It's filled with a ton of split pathways and strats and I love the me cars at the end. Because they're actually doing something, <coughs> Mario Kart 8. The only thing I wish is that there were more shortcuts. Shrooms can feel pretty useless here. At number 16 we have N64 Bowser's Castle created by Nintendo. I've never actually liked this track that much in the past. I felt pretty similar about it as to GBA Bowser's Castle 3. But recently I've really grown to love this track. My favorite part about the track is definitely the race shortcut at the end. This is another track that just gives great races. At number 15 we have DS Airship Fortress created by Sneaky. Airship Fortress is actually my favorite track in Mario Kart DS and this remake is amazing. The visuals are clean and it drives just like in the original version. I can't think of anything to criticize here. At number 14 we have Wii U Electrodrome created by Square Turnbolt. Electrodrome is actually far from my favorite track in Mario Kart 8 but this is definitely the best Mario Kart 8 remake in Mario Kart Wii. The visuals are absolutely stunning and the entire track drives very well. I also love how the part before the split pathways is boost panels now as I find it to be too long in Mario Kart 8. This is just an all around incredible remake. At number 13 we have DS Bowser's Castle created by Sneaky. Great remake of one of my favorite Bowser's Castles. This track is filled with a ton of different objects such as the burners, the spinning floor, the cylinder, the moving platforms and the thrums. There's even a neat shortcut at the end of lap 3. Overall just an absolutely incredible track. At number 12 we have 3DS Rainbow Road created by Bugsy. This is a million times better than what CTGP has to offer. The road is generally much wider and smoother, the ramps are nowhere near as high, the visuals are great and in general the track just drives much better. Add one of Mario Kart 7's best tracks on top of that and you got an absolute banger. At number 11 we have Wii Bowser's Castle created by Nintendo. This is the best Bowser's Castle for sure. The entire track is incredibly unique and diverse. It's also in my opinion the most fun track to drive. The only reason why it doesn't place any higher is because of lacks and viable shortcuts. Of course there's a glitch but let's be real no one does it in worldwide and barely any people even do it in lounge. Even then though this is definitely one of the best tracks that the Mario Kart series has to offer.
Entering the top 10, we got GBA Lakeside Park created by Chaos Shadow 23. From the outside, this remake might seem much more simple than most GBA remakes up here, but don't let that fool you. This track is absolutely insane. My favorite part about the track is definitely going for the Shroomu shortcut at the end. And in general, there is just a ton of off-road shortcuts here. It's also by far the best GBA track. At number 9, we have Diaz Rainbow Road created by ZPL. This remake is crazy good. It improves the original track by a ton. The entire track is very fun to drive and insanely fast paced due to all the ramps and boost panels. It adds a new shortcut and the visuals are breathtakingly good. Even though it doesn't have the loop and the corkscrew, this in my opinion is way more fun to drive than the original version. At number 8, we have Wii Rainbow Road created by Nintendo. Even with ZPL's incredible DS Rainbow Road remake, Wii Rainbow Road will just always remain on top. Every single section of the track significantly changes up the track design. We got the massive drop at the start, the boost panels afterwards, then the wavy road, the section with the holds, the super tight turns, the cannon, the wheat half pipe, the split pathway and a 180 degree turn to finish it off. This track is simply insane. At number 7 we have Wii Maple Treeway created by Nintendo. The fact that 5 of the top 10 tracks in this ranking are Wii tracks really says how insane Mario Kart Wii's track quality is. Maple Treeway might be quite janky but every single section of the track is just super fun to drive. And just like Rainbow Road it has many unique sections. I wish it had more shortcuts though. At number 6 we have 3DS Rock Rock Mountain created by Mr. Koi Koi and Zilli. This is just a really enjoyable track. It's super fun to drive and there's many different sections. This remake is great as well and looks amazing visually. At number 5 we have Wii Toads Factory created by Nintendo. This is another absolutely insane track. Every single section is incredibly fun to drive and is very unique with many different objects. I also absolutely love the lake skip. It's by far the most satisfying Shroom shortcut in Mario Kart Wii. Just an incredibly well created track. At number 4 we have 3DS Music Park created by Atlas. Just one word. Customization. There is custom effects for literally everything. There is a custom blooper effect, a custom power effect, a custom trick effect, a custom wheelie effect, a custom dust effect, even a custom item box breaking effect. It also looks incredible visually and is insanely animated. Not to mention that Music Park is one of the best tracks in the entire Mario Kart franchise. This remake is just too good to be true. At number 3 we have 3DS DK Jungle created by ZPL. DK Jungle is my favorite track in Mario Kart 7 and my favorite Mario Kart track outside of Mario Kart Wii. And when you add an incredible remake by the best CT creator of all time on top of it, words can just not describe. The entire track is insanely fun to drive and features many unique sections. The visuals are mind-blowingly great as well. ZPL truly is the custom track creating GOAT. At number 2 we have Wii Mushroom Gorge created by Nintendo. This track is jank as fuck and I love every single second of it. The jankiness along with the great track design is what makes this track so great. And the gap jump is my favorite shortcut ever, but it's far from the only shortcut on the track. There's also the intended shortcut at the start, the off-road glitch and a really cool golden strat that combines all of these shortcuts. But there's one more track that stands above the rest. Let's get to it. Finally, at the number one spot. We have Wii Cooper Cape created by Nintendo. Yeah, even considering the insane quality of the custom retro remakes, the top two are both Wii tracks. Cooper Cape has it all. An insanely fun and varying track design with a ton of different sections. A lot of unique objects like the Cooper Zappers or the water speeding you up. And of course, shortcuts. There's so many shortcuts here including a really cool golden strat. All of this combined sets Cooper Cape above the rest and makes it my favorite track in the entire Mario Kart franchise. And that concludes this ranking. Let me know your opinions in the comments down below and also let me know some ideas for future rankings. This video took more than 20 hours to record so a like and a sub will be very much appreciated. Also feel free to join my discord server. Thank you guys so much for your massive support. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video and as always enjoy Wario on drugs.